I would rather knock 50 doors and have 10 conversations than 100 doors and have two conversations. Look at how diligent you're approaching it and how much intention you have behind that activity. It makes a world of a difference saying, hey, I genuinely am trying to have conversations here and form a relationship. Welcome to The Raquel Show. This show is for entrepreneurs who want to play bigger in business and in life. And today I have a very, very special guest that I connected with first at an event that we were both speaking at. And then we joined this high level mastermind. What I love about him is his grit, his tenacity, and his no fluff action taker mode. Every time I connect with him, he's definitely one of those people in your circle that inspires you to actually play bigger on a massive scale, on a really, really large scale. He's the best at what he does. He's YouTube famous, and he's all about scaling your business with social media. So you all are in for a treat. Welcome to the show, Mike Sherrard. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. That's quite the introduction. I don't know if I can live up to that, but I'm uh, I'm excited to be here. It's been awesome to connect, and and obviously we approach business in in a very similar way, but in different avenues. So I'm I'm pumped for this. All right. So we're gonna like dive in. How did you become the expert that people go to to teach agents about social media? <laughs> yeah, million dollar <laughs> question. You know, I think for me, the biggest thing and, and what I'm really happy about is that it all came from my own experience. You know, I see a lot of people that are listening to other sources of, of you know, education and just reapplying it, but haven't yet, you know, done it themselves. For me, not to go too far into like a story, but, you know, when I was a new agent after quitting engineering, I was 24, I was new to the city, didn't know anybody, but more importantly, I was broke like many agents. So, you know, I door knocked for three hours a day, every single day in the snow, in the cold, in the rain, the whole nine yards for six months straight. And I did incredibly well. But I also realized that my business was only growing three hours a day, but I was working 16, 18 hours a day as a new agent, as most do. So I started realizing the importance of creating leverage. And after that, I started looking at, okay, well, how do I build a personal brand? How do I start to get in front of more people? but I didn't have the money to actually go do traditional advertising. And I started leveraging Facebook ads and Instagram to build my brand. And it all came down to consistency. I did really well with that and started saying, well, you know, when I was an engineer, I was listening to all these people on YouTube to learn about how to get into real estate. Well, maybe people want to hear about how I've been getting deals in my avenue of real estate. And what I did is I put out videos on everything that I personally had done and had experience with. Gold calling, door knocking, Facebook ads, and Instagram. And lo and behold, back in 2017, everybody wanted to know more about Facebook ads and Instagram. So I just continued to give it to them. And then again, as you continue to be a practitioner, your skill set develops and your strategies get better. And all that I did is share that at scale. And then, you know, really focusing on making sure that everything that I provide is clear, concise, and actually implementable in your business and not just, hey, here's a you know tip of the iceberg, but you have to go buy some program. I didn't want to be that type of guy. I wanted to say, hey, you can leave this video and take action today immediately. And not many people were doing that. And, and it kind of just snowballed into, you know, where we're at today. I love that story. And by the way, tell people, because you said snow. So tell people, and I'm from Scottsdale, and people don't know that. So where are you from? Yeah, I'm from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And it's pretty crazy. The first day that I was licensed, February 2017, I went out door knocking after my engineering job finished. And it was minus 10, and it was snowing. And I got my two first listings at $700,000 each the first day I door knocked. And that's how things kicked off. I door knocked until I remember this day, I couldn't even feel my hands anymore. So I was trying to like write people's contact information down, but I couldn't read it when I got home because I couldn't write. But that's how the journey all started. So agents, if you guys are complaining about the cold, minus 10 is really, really cold. So you have nothing to complain about. You know, things are constantly changing in the social media game, social media world, social marketing, however you call it, is how do you keep up with the trends that are actually working? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think, you know, trends are an important aspect of it, but I also think 
people can get really consumed with trends because when you start looking at, you know, the people that are thriving with any form of content in any medium on different platforms, it's the ones that are generally being consistent with the fundamentals, less the ones that are trying to latch on to any sort of given trend. And I think, you know, one of the big things agents struggle with from a mindset perspective, especially when they're trying to play bigger, is their mentality is to play bigger. I always need new. I need what's trending. I need what's relevant. But at the end of the day, if you're consistent with things that have been proven to work, you will always find a way to build massive momentum. So, you know, I focus more on what is going to create the most leverage, less what is the most relevant at this current point in time, because trends are trends for a reason. They come and they go. Whereas if you build a foundation that's predicated on leverage, that will never go away. But there is something to be said about trends. And I think it's all about looking at how can you apply that to your business in a way that does doesn't take you or deviate from your original plan. But when we start looking at this, I think one of the biggest things people are are maybe missing out on right now, and I see this constantly, but it's so important as the market's shifting, is a lot of agents create content solely for the 1%, which is the people that are looking to buy or sell today. But what they're not creating content for is the 99% that are wanting to sell in six, eight, 12 months down the road that aren't looking for an agent right now. And it's a similar mentality towards lead generation. People want to do paid ads. They only want to work with the bottom of funnel hot leads, not the top of funnel that need that nurturing. But people don't apply that to organic content. So a lot of the agents that are thriving right now are, yes, doing the typical videos that are related to the industry. But they're also focusing on what I refer to as local shareable content, which is content that is meant for the general public, like, you know, top five hidden speakeasy bars in, in Scottsdale that you didn't know about. Well, if an agent shared that and I'm not interested in real estate, I would still share that video with, you know, multiple friends, family, whoever, because I'm like, hey, I didn't know about these. That's pretty cool. We should go check it out. But that all funnels back to a realtor's profile. And the agents that are winning right now are the ones that are playing that longer term delayed gratification game of saying, yeah, I'm going to put out the 1% content for the people that are in the market now, but I'm not going to ignore the 99% that I want them to think about me when the market turns around and the time is right for them. And that's a huge wide open gate that not enough people are applying, which goes to the trends of some of these platforms like TikTok and Reels and things like that, just applying it in a way that isn't necessarily, you know, from the Vanessa Law Mastermind, isn't necessarily the PhD level content that is for people that are experienced at bottom of funnel, but more the elementary content that the general is very interested and intrigued by. So good. So good. So you talk about, you know, leverage fundamentals and shareable content, right? If somebody was new to social media or wanted to level up their social media game, what three things should they do immediately in your opinion? Definitely. First thing by far, and this is honestly made the biggest difference in my own business is approaching your content in an unbiased lens. And what I mean by that is, you know, still to this day, I put out 468 videos on my YouTube channel and I rewatch a hundred percent of my own videos before they go public. And the reason being is because I can't have the audacity to say that because I've got, you know, almost 80,000 subscribers that I'm special or that my content deserves more attention than the next person. Like, I can't say that. So what I do and what I urge people to do is let's look at YouTube, for example, then I'll talk about Instagram or any other platform and Facebook ads, especially is when you're going to put out a video on YouTube, for example. The biggest quality test I do is twofold, which is number one, I take my thumbnail and I put it beside the ones that are already ranking for that search term, whether it be, you know, moving to Scottsdale, moving to Phoenix. I do that search and I put my thumbnail beside the ones that are already ranking and say, unbiasedly, if I did not know the quality of content in that video, I'm just looking at the thumbnails, who's what I actually click on? And if it's not my own, how can I expect anybody else to do it? But then I'll watch those three videos and then I'll watch mine and say, which ones on Biasly are actually more engaging, more informative, more entertaining. And if mine isn't better than the top three, I can't expect other people to think it's better than the top three. And that goes for Facebook ads as well. If you can remove your realtor hat 
and say, if this ad landed in front of me right now on my screen while I'm scrolling, would I actually click on it? Would I go so far as to put my information and would I be inviting somebody to contact me? Or big with Instagram, a lot of people are wondering why their Instagram and TikTok maybe isn't getting as much engagement. Well, ask yourself that question next time you post a reel. If this reel came across your profile and you did not know who you were through a hole in the wall, would you like that reel? Would you go so far as to comment? Would you even go so far as to click on their profile and follow them? Well, if you wouldn't do that, how can you expect anybody else to? So I think approaching it in that unbiased lens makes a world of a difference because now you're putting yourself in the consumer's shoes, lending yourself to consumer behavior. I think the next thing is again, focusing on the fundamentals, especially when it comes to like long form video content. One of the things I always hear is like, Mike, I don't know what videos to record. And I'll say, well, Raquel, how many communities are in you know Phoenix? And you'll say 150. Great, you've got 150 community tours to go record, go do it. Right. Or when you start looking at this, it's not overcomplicating it, but just following the basics that have been proven in every market. So one of my recommendations, part two, would be search for people that have done well in other markets who are very easy to find in terms of living in you know any city, filter the videos by most popular, look at them, study them, put your own spin on it. And there you go. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. People are going to relate to you more than other people as well. And then I think the last part is finding efficiencies, but also prioritization. Another big thing I hear, we actually found this out yesterday. We did a kind of like a poll within our group of what are most agents struggling with? And the biggest one, which is something that I'm, I'm pretty excited to talk about is like time management, but it's never a time management issue. It's a mismanagement of priorities because you'll always make time for what is a priority in your business, right? So you know, anybody that I see struggling with social media content, I will ask them, hey, John, pull up your Google Calendar right now and show me where you've got time blocked off to record content. And nobody that is doing well is missing that boat, but everybody that's struggling can't show me that. So you have to just make sure it's a priorities and live by your calendar and start to find ways to build that into your business. Because a lot of people treat it as a negotiable, which makes it really difficult for them to be consistent. So those probably would be the top three. So good. All that stuff with like nuggets. And I know that people that are watching and listening to this, you're going to probably have to rewind that because he gave you really actionable <laughs> steps that could work and blow up your social media. You mentioned it earlier. There are agents out there. There's entrepreneurs out there that are making content for the sake of making content. And there is another part of this is strategy to actually getting leads, actually yeah. getting clients. What would you say are some of the things that are performing in today's market that are actually getting agents business? Yeah, definitely. So we can split it in terms of a couple of different platforms and I'll talk about kind of organic content and then I can talk about paid content. Now on the organic content or free videos like Reels, TikTok and, and YouTube, on YouTube, the ones that are working extraordinarily well are kind of a couple of different buckets. Number one, relocation works incredible. As the market shifts, people are maybe not able to afford their current home or they're looking in markets that are more affordable. Anything that is related to relocation on long form works incredibly well. This is going to be cost of living in your city, pros and cons to living in your city, five things you need to know before moving there, all that kind of stuff. Community tours work incredibly well. Because again, the best part about community tours is those communities aren't going anywhere ever. So those videos are relevant for the next five years. Now, the next one, part three, that works really well, which most people ignore, and there's a lot of people that talk about YouTube on YouTube for agents, and they say to ignore this, but this is proven to work incredibly well. Actually, the top five agents in my group that leverage YouTube, this is how they're getting the most of their clients right now, which is market reports. Now, a lot of people say, you shouldn't do it because it's not evergreen. But the issue with that is that even though it might not be evergreen in nature of lasting forever, being relevant forever, as the market is shifting so fast, it gives you the opportunity to control the narrative. Because what's happening right now is there's all these, you know, fluffy articles talking about the world's crashing down, but they're not actually talking to somebody or hearing information from somebody through an unbiased lens. It's educated in that space. So if you could do a market report about the market in you know Arizona or Phoenix specifically in April 2023, well, that gives you the ability to control how the different interest rates and things that are happening in the economy apply to buyers and sellers and why it's still a good time. 
And when you can control the narrative, you can control the way that that traffic funnels to you, which works amazingly well. Now, on short form, the content that's been working the best, and we've looked at all the data to prove this, is going to be things like, it's sort of, again, with the relocation style videos, but a lot of it comes down to like community comparisons or sub-market comparisons, where it's like, you know, Scottsdale versus Phoenix. And talking about that, and the reason why it works well is because people from Scottsdale and Phoenix are going to see that video and they're going to have polar opposite opinions. So what happens is it drives mass organic engagement, all driving traffic back to you. This is why also things like um, any sort of new updates related to legislation, laws, rules and regulations in your state, not just at the city level, but state level, work really well for mass engagement and driving traffic to you. Because again, the polarity aspect of it. And then finally on short form is the typical property tours, which work wonders. But the best part about all of it is it's not the dancing around, making a fool of yourself type videos that people assume you have to create. You don't right? But it does work well. And then I think lastly, to pull the full circle would be advertising paid ads. A lot of people are curious about that. That right now is coming down to video focused ads or Google ads focused on buyers. I see a lot of people, I'm sure you do too, saying, well, I want seller leads. Well, if you create Google ads predicated on move up, move down or relocation, they are sellers before buyers. But if you target sellers, the cost per lead is astronomical. If you target buyers that are most likely to also be sellers, you get two birds for one stone, but you get a lower cost per lead and it converts way higher. OMG, this is why <laughs> this guy is on our show. Speaking of engagement, a lot of agents ask, you know, what is a proper way of engaging once you actually got organic traffic, you've got eyeballs, you got people that are in your DMs. Sometimes I get these auto replies of like, thanks for the follow. I'm an agent. If you have a question, DM me. Like, are you pro for that? Against that? Like, what do you think is the best way to engage with people? Yeah, definitely. I'm not an advocate for that. I find one of the quirkiest things about our industry is that people say that they get into real estate because they love making connections with people and they love relationships with people, but they don't approach their marketing advertising in a way that is founded on creating relationships. So there, there's a misalignment between how they want to perceive themselves and how they're actually being perceived by the general public. So, you know, I love what George does. That is one of, you know, both of our mutual friends and coaches is, you know, taking the time to just record a quick introduction video and sending that to everybody that follows you is an incredible way to make it something that's different. It stands out, but also it's tailored toward that individual. But I think when you start looking at how people should be engaging, a lot of people right now, my group that are doing very well with, you know, Instagram DM engagement, for example, are the ones that are creating conversation that's relevant to what's happening right now in the market that might apply to that individual asking how they like the community that they live in or anything that is personal that can actually strike up some sort of two-way dialogue right this is also the best way to get organic engagement on something like youtube or instagram is to ask a question but then reply with a question Right. So like we do this all the time with YouTube videos is if you're doing a video about like moving to Scottsdale, the way you would do is say, by the way, you know, this is my favorite restaurant in Scottsdale. What's yours? Drop a comment below. I'd love to know. And they're like, oh, this steakhouse and say, great. What's your favorite thing on the menu? Instead of just saying, thanks, I'll check it out. Reply with a question. And now it starts to create dialogue. So there's really cool ways to kind of get into the rabbit hole of dialogue that's very natural organic but is predicated on founding that actual relationship that people could tell is genuine so true and so good and now speaking of you have a massive youtube channel and i know people are going to follow you after they listen to this and you're probably going to see what he's built and how long and all that stuff but if you had all of that shut down if you had your social media channels all shut down and you needed to put something in escrow in the next 30 to 60 days and you were an agent, what would you do? Cold call door knock every day for three hours a day, every single day. And, you know, it's, it's really funny because a lot of people ask me like, Mike, you know, should I just rely on social media? Like you're the social media guy. And I'm like, yeah, but you have to understand that I built 
50% of my or 80% of my business in my first year came from door knocking. 50% of my business in my second year came from the door knocking I did in the first six months. And my business was 80% listing heavy. And also it was in a market where only 27% of listings were selling. It was the slowest market in North America. So the way that I want people to understand the dynamic and the relationship between, you know, traditional, old school and modern or prospecting and social is that you need to do both, but understand how they both fit into your business. So when you look at prospecting, this is for now business. This is for immediate business. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. You get out what you put in. If you put in three hours a day, you get three hours of output out as long as you do it with an intent. And I want to talk about quickly a caveat to that after I get through the point. Now, social media is delayed gratification. So instead of it being a linear relationship, it's more exponential. So you look at the agents in, our, in, in any kind of industry here that are doing well with YouTube, a lot of times it takes six months for them to build massive momentum. Like you look at Suman in our group, he did 87 deals in his first year from YouTube. He got zero deals for the first six months. If he gave up five months into that, or if he was solely relying on that, he wouldn't have no business. So what you want to do is offset the delayed approach to content with a proactive approach like prospecting. So if you need now business, you have to put the boots on the ground. Now, the one biggest piece of advice I have for people when it comes to prospecting, if you need now business, which most agents do, there's two different ways you could prospect. And this is where I see a lot of people go wrong. It's not always what you do, it's how you do it. And I think that's a principle where, unfortunately, a lot of like coaches out there say, like, go make 300 calls a day or go knock 100 doors a day. But the problem is, is that's a vanity metric. So you're having an agent saying, hey, you know, it's Mike Shard with EXP Realty or, you know, real broker or whoever. And then if Raquel shuts me down, they're like, okay, cool. On to the next one. I got that number. Now I'm on to number two and three. And you're going for volume. But when I was door knocking, the approach I had is I do not want to step away from that door until I've exhausted every effort humanly possible to get contact information, whether that's a I'm really not interested, shut the door, screw off, like whatever. Like I would rather knock 50 doors and have 10 conversations than 100 doors and have two conversations. So if you're going to go for the now business approach, which is advised, Look at how diligent you're approaching it and how much intention you have behind that activity. It makes a world of a difference. I'm not focusing on these inflated vanity KPIs, but saying, hey, I genuinely am trying to have conversations here and form a relationship. I love how you mixed and you heard it here is that it's not just about social media. It's about the mixing of both. And what you what I really heard and what I tell a lot of our coaching clients is it's outbound. If you want to make yeah. things happen, it's outbound. It's no matter how you look at it, if you want to make things happen, it's going to be more outbound than passively waiting or hoping and praying that something like clicks. Yeah. Right. And so I know a lot of people are listening to this and as real estate agents, they're like, wow, I have so many things on my plate. Let's talk about time management. Like, should people batch content? How do they get this all in? No one knew two, three years ago that they needed to record videos to attract a brand for their real estate business, right? And so let's talk about time management. Then I wanna talk about how would you build a social media team? Yeah, definitely. So when it comes to time management, again, a lot of people ask like, what's, what's a perfect content calendar? And the reality of it is the perfect content calendar is a calendar that you will actually execute on consistently for the next six, 12 months. And so when you look at it, like I'm a huge advocate of batching. So. I take one Saturday, I batch, I block off Saturday, every Saturday from 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. And that's my recording time. Now, one Saturday, I will do all my prep work. I'll look at all the video topics I want to do. I will do all the bullet points for those videos. And the next Saturday, I record my month's worth of content. And I just rinse and repeat that schedule. Now, that works for me. But when you look at some agents like Louie, who we both know, he's tried batching for months and it didn't work just based on his schedule with kids and a spouse and sports and this and that. So he blocks off one hour a day, seven days a week, and he records one video a day within that hour. And that works for him. So batching does work for the majority of people, but you have to find a time that works within your schedule. And also like for... I don't have to do production anymore. So I could do it on Saturdays. Most agents are doing showings. So you might want to do it on a Wednesday, but you have to treat it as a non-negotiable. So that's the biggest problem I see. 
And so say, okay, you know, I'm fired up about video. I'm going to record this Wednesday. And then like a lender or a title rep or some other agent reaches out and say, Hey, you want to go for lunch this Wednesday? And you're like, yeah, I really don't want to record. Let's do it. And it's the easiest thing to treat as negotiable because unfortunately being delayed gratification, a lot of agents think because they can't see the immediate ramifications of not doing it now, well, they could just do it next week. But as we all know, what you do today shows up six, eight, 12 months down the road. So that starts to compound. So if you're going to take it seriously, you have to treat it as a non-negotiable in your calendar. Love it. So if you were to build a social media team, so those that are looking, so some of the agents that I speak to today, they're like, how do I find a social media manager? What do I need on my team to do all of these things? I mean, there's so many different platforms. There's repurposing. I mean, the whole shebang, right? So if you were to build a social media content team, what would that look like in a perfect like dream world? Yeah. Perfect dream world is one thing. <laughs> Reality <laughs> is a different thing. So, you know, let me explain my journey and I think it's going to help people. So, you know, I was tripling my production every year as a, as a solo agent here in Calgary. And in my 30 of real estate is when I started taking like YouTube actually seriously and said, okay, I'm going to do, you know, three videos a week, every week. But that's also when I was the top producer of my past brokerage. And I was, you know, doing a lot of deals, but I was editing my own videos, filming my own videos, optimizing them, doing the Canva designs chopping them up and repurposing them. So, you know, it's not to say that that's efficient by any stretch, but what I, what I like about that journey and what I urge people to do is to try it themselves first is that I'm a huge advocate of knowing enough to be dangerous, which is you've actually done that activity yourself because what I see a lot of agents do wrong is they go on Fiverr, they outsource editing, they outsource optimization. I do recommend outsourcing any graphic design, but for things like optimization or posting for that matter, there's multiple situations where I've seen agents in, in my group or other groups that have decided to use, uh, you know, optimization from somebody else. And they look at their analytics and everybody's coming from Bangladesh. Well, that's not authentic organic engagement if they're coming from a, a completely different continent that is never going to buy or sell in your market. So the same thing with like getting somebody the right copy for you. That's not going to come across as you in the beginning. But if you could start to do it yourself for long enough to then train somebody, like because I've done the graphic design and the editing and the optimization, I know enough to be able to take a quick glance at it and say, hey, here's what's wrong with it. But if you haven't done yourself, you don't know how to call BS on something that doesn't actually look right or is misaligned because you haven't done it. So I urge people first, to just do it yourself because it really doesn't take that much time, but it's an incredible skill to develop. And that's where a lot of agents fail to realize is most people stop learning when the repercussions were immediate, which is like high school or university or college. So when you can start to develop these skills, it applies to so many other things. Now, the way I have it set up now is that I've got a video editor, I have a graphic designer, and then I have an executive assistant that helps, you know, manage that process start to finish. I still do my own optimization. I still do my own video uploading and I still post everything myself because for me, I get inspiration from doing that of finding new ideas and new topics and things like that. So I think it is good to start by yourself. It's good to first outsource any graphic work. Then I recommend outsourcing any video work. And then the third approach, if you can find somebody that has experience in your industry, is to outsource the posting, the optimization, and the uh, engagement of it. Love it. There are a lot of things that you just dropped. And I know that there is, for those that are listening, there's also a lot of resources out there. I mean, a, another one, another hot topic in our in our industry is obviously chat GPT. What are yeah. some of the resources for those that are listening out there? And there is a caveat to that too, right? Because there's generality to it. And then you showing up as an expert in your space. What would you say are some of the most powerful resources that you can tell some of our listeners today or like some must, maybe like tools or, or resources that they could utilize to make this even more efficient for your solo entrepreneur or your agent? Yeah, definitely. Like as you alluded to, like chat GPT and, and any form of AI could be really good for like getting video ideas, right? Like write out 10 video topics that a real estate agent should create or write out the five reasons why somebody should move to Phoenix in 2023. Like 
that's good to get you 90% of the way. And I think when we start looking at AI, it's a tool that gives us 90% leverage, but the 10% has to be your own spin on it. And it has to be your approach and your tonality. And that's what shines through. And that's what people engage with. Now, tools that I personally use, like I swear by vidIQ for optimization on, on YouTube videos, because it will basically guide you through that process. And then just becoming familiar with whatever's free. Like, you don't have to pay a ton of money to build a successful business. As we talked about, like whenever people see the behind the doors of my business, they're like, how do you make multiple seven figures? Like your business looks like it should make a thousand dollars a year. Like I run it off Google drive, Google docs and Gmail. And that's just the reality of it. And free tools like iMovie, which is what I use to edit all my videos and Canva, which I design everything on. Like you could do it in a very easy way. And I think, you know, there's, there's a, a really important thing, which is systems are are what scales, right? Systems are scalable, which you know more than anybody else. But the caveat to that is that a lot of people get too consumed with designing these sexy systems and not on the execution, right? Would my business be further if I had wonderful systems? Of course it would be. But I've been able to build a pretty decent business by just executing consistently on the simple things for an extended period of time. Like I really don't do anything special. I'm just more consistent than the average person. And I consciously try and get to get better unbiasedly month over month. So I think tools are really important. There's great tools out there like time management, Asana, Notion is great. One that I don't know if you've looked at is Shift where it's really cool. You can actually keep all of your things in, in one you know lens. But again, I'm just a huge advocate of removing distractions. And I try not to distract people with the next shiny thing because it takes them from actually executing on what they know they need to do. Yeah, so true. And as we look at 2023, there's so many different things out there, bright and shiny objects. You kind of mentioned it. How would you tell agents today? Like what's something that they can do to actually position themselves to win for this year? I love this year. This is so exciting because, you know, again, when I got started in 2017, 27% of listings were selling. Like this market is still a fantastic market. Like people have not seen what it can get to. But the really cool part is that the average agent has got into the industry in the last two years when it was a joke of a gravy train. So what's happening is because it's shifted a little bit, you have people that are mentally and physically checking out. So they're physically checking out by removing their license or they're mentally checking out by getting all consumed in things that are changing and they're not executing. So what I love during the times of changing markets, if you will, is that it opens the doors for you to outwork agents that have officially become complacent. And my biggest recommendation, which is funny being recognized as like a social media guy is focusing on the basics. And what I mean by that is the ones that are focusing on physicals and expireds, the ones that are hitting doors and approaching it in a value-driven way, the ones that are creating leverage with foundational content that is not a shiny penny, but proven to work, that is all what builds a thriving business. But what you'll see is that this is a game now of staying in contact with people. So what happened over the last couple of years is like, you know, you talk to me, you're ready to buy, you're going to buy like in the next 12 hours at 200 grand of a listing price. And it's going to happen like quick, but you didn't have to follow up with your clients. If you listed their home, cause it's sold day one, you didn't have to follow up with first time home buyers because they bought immediately. You didn't have to follow up with leads because new people were coming in by the day. So I think the key to success over the next eight, 12, you know, 18, 24 months is going to be how can you stay in touch with people, not how can you get more people into your ecosystem? Because there's going to be a lot of people that are going to say, hey, I want to wait until rates change. Fine. But what happens is a lot of agents say, well, then basically screw you. I'm going to go find people that are ready to buy now because that's what they were used to for the last two years. Well, when that person then goes buys in 12 months from now, they're going to work with whoever they're contact with at that point in time. And a lot of people are going to lose that contact because they didn't have to over the last couple of years. So I think my best advice is to focus on the basics and the fundamentals, but also make this a game of delayed gratification and staying in touch with people for as long as humanly possible with a value driven approach. Love it. So you have like told us all kinds of things. 
today. He blessed us with so many different like gold and nuggets. What's next for Mike? Yeah, you know. What are you most excited about that you're working on? For me, I think it's creating a container and, and there's multiple avenues of, of which I'm about to roll this out, but creating a container that people can trust for value-driven education. And I think one of my biggest pet peeves in the industry is that there's people with big followings, which is wonderful, but the value doesn't oftentimes trump the vanity. And I think that's a huge mission that I'm on is how can I just deliver more value so that if you come into my ecosystem, whether it be an event, a mastermind, a YouTube video, anything that you can guarantee you're going to get something actionable from that every single time. And so for me, it's just as agents are going through maybe a potentially more difficult time, how can I provide even more value than I already have in the past? And I'm just looking and and rolling out over the course of this year, different mediums of being able to allow people to come into that container. But it all comes down to being able to help people and, and avoid the distractions of, again, as you alluded to, there's so many people saying X, Y, and Z, talking about the same topics with different opinions and this, But there's very few people that are practitioners or have the data to actually back up what they're saying. They're just ripping off a Gary Vee video and saying, hey, here's how to apply to real estate. Like, no, I want people to come into a safe space where they feel like they're going to be respected, but also be able to get value from it. So that's kind of a roundabout approach to saying that hopefully my content improves over the course of this year. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm in agreement with you, right? There's a lot of people out there with vanity, but that don't have the experience or that are teaching theory. And then when you boil it down, it's like, they've never been in a living room. They've never sold real estate. They've never, you know, whatever they're telling their coaching clients. So I'm with you there. As we wrap up, there's always one question that I ask every single guest on the show. What does Mike do to play bigger in business or in life? Yeah, definitely. It's, a wonderful question. I know it's a mantra of your business. And and honestly, you know, I think the concept of playing bigger for me is not trying to reinvent what other people are doing, but stay so far ahead that they'll never be able to catch up. And I think, you know, when you boil that down, it's why I always say like, yours is play bigger minus separation season. Like I like to separate the gap so that you can't even like, it's not even worth trying to catch up because again, everybody has their own unique approach. Everybody has their own superpower and people are going to connect with you over the next person. So if you just work on being the best version of yourself, you will win, you will play bigger. So for me, I think my recommendation is twofold. The first way that I play bigger is I work everybody and I'm more consistent. So that's my recommendation for people is just be more consistent than anybody else in your market and you will win inevitably. But it's also not comparing yourself to anybody else. And I think a lot of people fall victim to this where they're like, you know, did you see that agent got this listing or this agent speak, spoke at that event or this person launched this or they did that. Or it's like they went to this brokerage that like it doesn't matter. Like people ask me all the time, Mike, did you see this, that and the other thing on their stories or this? I'm like, dude, I do not look at anybody's stories. I don't look at their. I do not care. Like I'm like, I'm focused on how can I improve? And that everything else is a byproduct of that. It takes care of itself. So yes, it's good to keep an eye on your friends. And, you know, I watch yours and things like that because we're friends. But like when it comes to like competition in a market, I don't even acknowledge it. Like to me, it's it's white noise. So you need to focus on yourself and not everybody else because the time you spend focusing on other people those people that you're focusing on are executing, which is why you're focusing on them because they're actually doing something, right? So like go do something every day and improve consistently and you'll play bigger than anybody else. Oh, mic drop moment. Thank you, Mr. Mike Sherrard for being on our show. I appreciate you. I am so glad that we connected and I am going to keep cheering you on to keep playing bigger, my friend. Likewise. Thank you so much. 